This is the, the second video, which is uh, about the relationship between integrals and area. And in this particular video, I'm going to move to a more general formulation of the uh, area problem. Sometimes we want to calculate the area of a region that's bounded by two curves. And actually, almost all area problems can be broken up into parts where we are just doing the region bounded by two curves. The steps in solving such an area problem uh, are as follows. The first thing we do is find the intersections. Finding the intersections means that you have to know something about the shape of the curves that you're dealing with so you don't try intersecting curves that don't meet. And then when you find the intersection, you're usually just doing some algebra. You have to work out which of the functions is on top. In other ones, which is further up the graph or which one is in the more positive direction along the y-axis. And that's a very important step in doing an area problem. And then we use a new integral, a different integral, for each of the intervals where the role of top function and bottom function changes. Let's illustrate that with this particular set of curves. Here we have a red curve f of x and a blue curve g of x. I've shaded the area that we're interested in. Between a and b, f of x is the top function and g of x is the bottom function. Between b and c, the roles are reversed. So we have g of x on top and we have f of x on the bottom. Whenever we're calculating area with an integral, we're using the formula that the area is the integral along the x-axis between a and b of the top function minus the bottom function. So it's important that the top function not change to the bottom function somewhere between a and b. And that means that for this particular area problem, we're going to use one integral between a and b and then a different integral from between b and c because we have a new top function. But the formula we always have in mind is that the area is the top minus the bottom. Here's a question from a recent uh, first year examination at Carleton University. Calculate the area bounded by f of x equals x squared minus 4 and g of x equals minus x squared plus 4. These are quadratic polynomials and so they'll graph out as uh, parabolas. The one with the positive coefficient of x squared will open up. The one with the negative coefficient of x squared will open down. So that's what we can work out informally from just looking at the functions themselves. We ask where do they intersect? Well, intersections are found by letting the two functions equal each other. So when is f of x equal to g of x? Well, when x squared minus 4 equals minus x squared plus 4. The algebra takes us to 2x squared plus equals 8. Divide by 2, x squared equals 4. Take the square root, x equals plus or minus 2. So these two curves intersect at two points, and the points are when x is minus 2 and when x is plus 2. We know that one opens up and one opens down, and so we can easily answer the question, which one's on top? The curve that's opening down, g of x, must be the one on top. It goes from minus 2 to plus 2, and it goes through a positive value when x is equal to 0. Because it's plus 4, g is plus 4 when x equals 0. And f is the function at the bottom here. It's the one that's opening up between minus 2 and plus 2. And both functions have the value 0 at minus 2 and plus 2. So that's the picture we get. So our formula for the in area is the top minus the bottom integrated from a to b. Notice that we have now abandoned talking about the x-axis. The x-axis doesn't come into this. We just integrate between the intersection points, the top function minus the bottom function. So 
So in our particular case, we get the integral between minus 2 and plus 2 of g, which was minus x squared plus 4, minus f, which is x squared minus 4. If we do some algebra on that, we get 8 minus 2x squared. Antiderivatives are 8x and minus 2 thirds x cubed. And we evaluate that antiderivative at plus 2 and subtract the value at minus 2. Well, we just have a flurry of minus signs coming out through all of this because we subtract the value when we have a negative value there, but we put a negative value into x. When you chase all of that around, you'll get 16 minus 2 thirds 8 minus minus 16 plus minus 2 thirds 8. So when you work that out, it's 2 thirds of 30, uh, 32 or 64 over 3. Anyway, it's some number that you get here. And there is actually quite a bit of minus sign work to get correct as you do that calculation. So that's the area that's between these two curves. If we go back to our original uh, diagram, how could we write this area as, uh, as integrals so that we could calculate the shaded area that's between these two curves, between the red curve and the blue curve? Well, we're going to have to use two integrals. So we would use the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x. So that's the top function minus the bottom function. And then between b and c, the top function will be g of x. And so we have to change the integral there. And we'll get the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx e plus the integral between b and c of g of x minus f of x dx. So we have a new function that we're integrating here. For area problems, the formula is always the integral of the top minus the bottom between the uh, values of x, a, and b. If you're wondering what the, um, uh, how this relates to our first formulation of area problems, where we talk about a positive function and ask for the area under the curve, we're using the x-axis as the bottom function, and the formula for the x-axis is y equals 0. So there isn't actually a bottom term here because it's equal to 0 in that case, and then we're just integrating the top, and that's the simple form of, the, of this particular formula. Yeah.